Recently in the eLearning Heroes community, someone asked a question about how they could rotate the state of an object using triggers, because it doesn't seem to be possible. And I answered showing how you could do that. And let me show you what I did. Uh, first, you have the object selected. And when you ever want to create that state, if you hit Edit States, and let's say I'm going to rotate this to the position we're going to call 1, so I'm going to name it uh, 1, and I'll hit Add. And where the dilemma came is when you come up here to your format options, um, you know, you don't really have the ability to rotate uh, when you're in a state. But what I suggested, and this is one of the ways you can do that, is to cut this object while you're editing the state and paste it back. And then you do have the rotate option, and you have that ability to do that. So if I were to rotate this one, for example, to the one position, if I were thinking about a clock, and for my next um, state, I'm going to duplicate this one and call that 2. And then I can, uh, again, rotate that here to the 2 position. And I'm guessing at where these positions are. And I'll just do a, another one here. I'll call this one Surprise 3. And then I can rotate this one to the 3 o'clock position. And so that's one of the ways you could do that. And then, you know, you would come in here and begin. So, for example, I've got you know, some variables on these items to add and subtract values. So then I would just begin to create a series of triggers that would say, uh, change the state of the dial to the state of, uh, let's say, 1. And I would do something like when the variable changes uh, on dial and under the condition that that dial, you know, equal the value of 1. So let's just uh, pretend like that's what we're doing. And now I'm going to preview this slide. And as I add, increase that value, you see that state has changed. So that's what they were looking for, something like that. But as I thought further about it, there's actually a lot easier way that you might want to do something if you were going to rotate. And let me show you how that would work. So I'm going to take the same setup we have here. Instead of creating the, all of the extra states that we might do, I'm going to come up here to the Insert tab. And I'm coming to Dial. And I'm going to say, let's convert this item into a dial. And you'll see that it starts here with the 180 degrees. I'm going to go complete circle, so I'm going to go 360 degrees here. I am going to keep the 12 steps in here, uh, and I am going to start with the value of 0. Uh, and you'll notice that that puts it over here, so I'm just going to rotate it up so that the 0 is up here at the 0 position as well. Now we have the dial set, we're going to come in and create a trigger. And so I'm going to easily add a trigger to the plus sign. That's going to be a uh, an adjust a variable trigger. And instead of setting, I'm going to add a value of 1. And the variable I'm going to be adding that to is the one called dial1, the new one that I just created, when the user clicks the plus. And I could add conditions like, for example, uh, as long as dial1 um, is less than uh, the value of 12. because I don't really need to add it past 12. And I'm going to copy that trigger and paste it to the minus symbol. And in this case, I'm going to say subtract. And I'm going to do um, subtract 1 from dial. And instead of greater than, um, I'm going to say greater than 0. I want to make sure this says less than 12. So those are those values. And so now that's automatically going to work in my favor. If I were to hit preview without me building any states at all, you'll see that it's just going to rotate that dial and come back. So as far as rotating with a state, yeah, you can do that. But if you were doing something like this, it may be just as easy to convert that to a dial and let Storyline do really all of the heavy lifting for you. So thank you for watching. Here at UConn Learning, we're all about making e-learning easy for everyone. So whether you're new to course development or quite experienced, we're here to help you create more effective learning. You can visit us at uconnlearning.com.